of the Premier League uh, season is unfolding and it's unfolding rapidly. The games are coming thick and fast. Last week uh, in midweek there was a full programme and this week in midweek there's a full programme as well. It's taking its toll on players and, of course, the games being played behind closed doors aren't as satisfactory as you would wish them to be. I think it's also um, become apparent that there have been more away victories than home victories this year, which is a, not a surprise when you consider the circumstances. To discuss the latest uh, developments, we're joined now by John Giles. John, uh, it's not a surprise, is it, that there's more away victories than home victories, given the absence of crowds and the importance of crowds, really, uh, to players uh, to get them G'd up and just get that bit more intensity into their play. Uh, and as a watch, it's also a bit unsatisfactory. I find that anyway. Do you? Um, well, I'm glad to be watching it, Eamon. You yeah. know, under the circumstances, the fact that we have the matches yeah. is a big plus. Imagine if we didn't have them, yeah. Eamon. Yeah. Big yeah. clubs, big clubs could go out of business. Yes. Uh, you know, we're yeah. watching matches. I know it's not the best, but it's 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 the best available uh, to us. And I'd, I'd certainly rather have them uh, than not have them. Right. That's what we have to we have to put up with it, you know. Yeah, and one thing you didn't have to put up with yesterday, John, was any grief or misery because we're going to look at the Leicester City Leeds United game at Leicester. Leicester challenging really for place in Europe, even top of the league uh, very recently. And Leeds were going there yesterday. I would have made Leicester hot favourites, uh, but Jamie Vardy didn't play. But you watched it. I watched it. You said you believed. Leeds were outstanding. And you did tell us a couple of months ago now, they'll win games you wouldn't expect them to yep. win and they'll lose games you'd expect them uh, to win. Um, now, you wouldn't. I wouldn't have expected them to beat Leicester, particularly as Leicester went ahead. That young fellow Barnes is a very good player. He scored after 13 yep. minutes. But uh, Leeds came back, bang, 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 3-1. Well, they were excellent, Damon, and you know that's what they're going to be like. You know, they, we saw them at the start of the season and gone to Liverpool. I know they were beaten on the day, and, and pl- played some really, really top class matches. Yeah, very, very good. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I think it was was it uh, Brighton beat them. Yeah, at Leeds, where they were they were poor. Yeah, on the day, uh, and that's the way they were. But they were very, very good. Uh, against it, uh, like you, you said there, and we've said all along, Leicester are a very, very good team. Yeah, uh, and, and and lost the goal down as you say, and came back well and won it well. Really, really won it well. They went two one up but in the second half, and, and this is the way Bielsa plays. There's no sitting back, holding on to a lead. Amy. No, it's go 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 all the time, you know, on which they did. And Bamford was outstanding, and I didn't think he'd have a good season. You know, I thought, I thought he was just mm. an ordinary player. But yeah. he scored an outstanding goal and uh, helped with the other two other goals. Yeah, Bamford has scored 11 goals in the Premier League and I'm like you, John, I didn't expect him. He does qualify to play for Ireland, you know. I didn't expect him uh, to uh, feature uh, as a player in the Premier League, certainly not as a fairly pr- prolific goal scorer, which he has done. But when we were talking yesterday, John, after that match, you said something really interesting to me. I want to share it with our listeners, which is this, that you think Bielsa is outstanding and you think if he was coaching Manchester United right now it would be dramatic. Tell me about that. Well, it's the way he has the Leeds team playing, Eamon. You know, yeah. he hasn't bought a lot of big players. No. Uh, pretty much the, the, the same team that he took over who were middle of the of, of the of the uh, second division and he's turned them into the, the team that we see now. Now, they're not perfect but with his philosophy the, the, the players that he has is, is absolutely amazing what he's getting from them. Yeah. So I, I just imagine them. Imagine them with with Manchester United, with Rashford and Greenwood and Fernandez and all these players yes. playing in the way that they're playing. Yes. It's amazing, Eamon. I have to. I, I want to watch them more because most of the, the games teams that we play now, when they get the ball from the goalkeeper to the right back, they're very very slow getting out of the defence. Yeah. Very slow. The majority of them are very slow getting out of the fence. But you watch Leeds play, Eamon. They play it out from the back to the goalkeeper. But next thing, 
they're in the opposition half of the field. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's... He, but, and I have to watch him more to see how he does it. I, I know he encourages the, 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 the defenders to take the responsibility to get the ball and go forward with it. Yes. But you don't see Leeds, like, if you look out for it, uh, Eamon, or any of you listeners look out for it, they very seldom play it across the back. Yeah. They do now and again, but most teams are playing to the right back, to the centre back, over to the left back, back across. Leeds don't do that. And, and, and they get out of the defensive situation, and then they go. Yes. They go for it. I mean, you, you watched the game yesterday, I think it was the third goal. Yeah. They, they were, it was from a corner kick. And they, 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 they defended the corner kick, and they finished up with Bamford going from that halfway line to. But next thing, there's two white players, white shorts beside them. <laughs> yeah, and no, sometimes it's... they have six. I mean, you know, sometimes yeah. when they make a break, they have six. But imagine him, imagine him with the players that Manchester United. I think he'd be sensational. Yeah, I really and do. Pep Guardiola is on the record as saying when he came to England uh, that this guy uh, Bielsa is the best coach in the world, and this is based on his work. Uh, in South America, um, particularly uh, in Argentina, where he was outstanding, he won everything. Um, and it's great that they have him. And I know you're happy with your Leeds United shirt every... Well, happy. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't believe it, Eamon. I mean, yesterday, it, it, you know, I thought, it's like Leicester are the top team, as we well, know. they are, yeah. Because you know, yeah, I was talking to somebody, I think, well, they, they were to bet for winning the league. Leicester. Yes. But Leeds on the day, I know Vardy was, was missing, and, and he's a big player for them. But they, in the end, by the end of the game, they played him off the pitch. Yep. Really did, you know. Yep. Now, that, that next week, you go in somewhere, and it, it could be the opposite. Yeah, you, t- you, you know? told us that months ago, um, that that's the way uh, that it was going to be. Mm. Um, and uh, we'll watch out for it. Um, yeah. I don't want them doing any damage to my beloved Liverpool. Now, John, <laughs> let me ask you um, about... Uh, Arsenal and Manchester United as it happens we were talking while we watched this game on uh, Saturday yeah. evening um, and Roy Keane was very uh, vocal in his criticism of United yeah. uh, he said um, that now that they were top of the league they were afraid of it um, and one other criticism that really was striking for me uh, was Paul Scholes' criticism of Fernandez. He said he hasn't turned up in the big games. And now, um, I think, well, I certainly respect Scholes, and I think you do. He doesn't mm, He yeah. doesn't shoot his mouth off for the sake of it. Um, uh, and I like Fernandez, but I have noticed too. But let's talk about uh, Keane's um, comments, because I think Keane is good on things like that. He knows what it's like to be at top of the league. He knows what yes. it's like to be a United player. And he knows that kind of pressure. Yeah, and he was, uh, I mean, what made Keane great, I mean, in my opinion, yeah. was his attitude week in and week out. Yes, yes. Right. And when, he, when, he, when, he, when he's watching these, these, these particular matches, I'd say it drives him mad because that's what he did. And it was one of the, one of the main reasons that made him a great player. Yeah. Every match he played in, I mean, whether it be bottom of the league, top of the league, his attitude was, we've got to go, we've got to play, we've got to drive it. Yeah. Now, what's happened in Manchester United in the last couple of matches? They haven't. They don't have that. You know. Yeah. Uh, it, it, and 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 that's a gimme. If you want to win the league, I mean, it's week in, week out, week in, week out. And when you're playing a team that's supposed to be inferior to you, you have to go down to what's considered to their level. In other words, all they have is attitude, will to win the opposition. Mm. Now, if you match that. Then you should be the best team yes. because you've got you've got better players. Yes, and that's what that's that's the essence and the essence in many ways. Keane uh, at his best for Manchester United. There yeah. wasn't a match that he went out said he were playing Watford or bottom of the league in his day. It wasn't well. We're going to take it easy here, and that's what Manchester United did last week. Yeah, uh, when they played Sheffield United, there's no doubt. Um, yeah, because watching the match, players not getting back when they should do, as if well they're not going to score, they're no good. We'll walk through this. Yeah. And that's when you get the kick up the backside. Now, when, when I think when Keane watches that, yes, it drives him crackers. Yeah, and he and, understands that kind of winner's mentality. And like, oh, yeah, yeah. You see In a, a lot way. Of, you see a lot yeah. of punditry um, or analysis on television from people who haven't been there. Keane is somebody who has, as is uh, Graeme Souness. Uh, these are yeah. players 
who were great players in mm. the in the, the most important part of the field, really, in midfield, where games are won and lost. But these were leaders, uh, yes. and they can spot the sort of vacuum when there's no leaders there. Yeah. Well, that's what the, that's what the, the, the analysis is so good, uh, yeah. mainly on those particular aspects, uh, especially Keane. Yeah. You know what I mean? And because that's what he was. That's, that's what he was great. And Skulls had it as well, in, yes. in, 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 a, in a similar way uh, and a different way to Keane, he had this winner as you'd we, we played in as more of a scheme or a getting on the ball. Yeah. Whereas Keane was the winner of the ball and driving them on. Yes. And, uh, you know, like, like looking at Fernandes, I mean, it was at Liverpool, I think. I mean, he, he, yeah, he, didn't he, show he, up he, really. He, 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 he looked tired. Yes. He looked tired. But, but I'll, I'll say this for him, in relation to Skulls, you see, when he came to Manchester United and still now, as people say, he's, he's the new Skulls. He's not like Skulls at all. No, no. And, you know, Skulls played in a different position near enough. If he was a deep line uh, schemer who could control the game, uh, Fernandez is brilliant at what he does. He's a goal scoring midfield player. Yes. He's not going to dictate the game. And, 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 and I'd say Skulls would be looking at it through his own eyes as a player yes. who, di- who does that, as, as Keane does in the, in the, in the, the go, go, go area. Yeah. Because nobody, there's nobody better than those two. Are talking about those particular situations yes. that the team is in. Yeah, and when you think about those players and don't want to be disrespectful to uh, the Manchester United team of the present, but uh, to live up to the players as great, and I don't think great is the inappropriate word for Scholes and Keane, is, is very, very difficult. Now, they, they didn't beat Arsenal, uh, and I, I watched the game fairly carefully, John, and uh, there's a couple of players. Pogba was back to his uh, nothing self, uh, having played a, a few good games, uh, mm. two, two or three. Uh, yeah. And uh, the rest of them were just, um, they're not really good enough. Fred and McTominay in midfield, uh, not really good enough. Martial comes on, not really good enough. They're not really Manchester United calibre players. And they're not the calibre caliber of player, John, that City and Liverpool, for example, who are top of the league with United yeah. at the moment, have. They haven't no. got the players, have they? No. Uh, well, the thing is, you have to make the most of the players that you have. I mean, I, I, I go back to Solskjaer again and the manager. Yeah. You know, that, 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 that's, that's the starting point. You know, that's where the manager demands, demands this type of situation. You know, mm. they demands this of the players. You're not doing it. You know, that, that's what that, that has to be done. I don't think Solskjaer is that type of personality. Um, yeah. I just don't. Now, I'm not in the dressing room, but I see him on the touchline and, and I think, well, it's out and play. And, but there's, there's no, like the likes of Klopp and, and, and Ferguson in their day, I mean, improve the team match by match by match by match by match. Yes. Football's made up of a million little things. Yes. Match by match. Every match, you improve it and prove it. I don't see that with Solskjaer. I don't see him looking at a match and saying, okay, this is what we did wrong. This is what we have to put right. Yeah, you know, the little things, and then that leads to the, the inconsistency yes. that, that you get from Manchester United. Yeah, you know, they played very well last week. What did they play in the last couple of matches didn't play very well. Um, you know, you go back to Ferguson, the great managers. They didn't have that lapse no. in in concentration and no. go, and, and of course they didn't win every match they played in. But it wasn't for the want to try. And, no, and if they did go out and play and not try, there would be murders. Yeah. In the team. Yes. Because that's, that's what they had. I don't see that in the present Manchester United team. They have a lot, an awful lot of talented players. There's no doubt about that. And that's why I go back to Bielsa, because Bielsa is getting a, a song, as they say, I mean, out of a team. that average players, really. Yes. But, he ha- the way he has, but it's the way he has them playing and demands that of them. Right. That's maybe, what the great managers do. Maybe he might end up at all times. It would be interesting to see. Anyway, it's an interesting observation on your part. Um, now, John, the top three in the league are Manchester City, Manchester United um, and Liverpool. City have 44 points, four points clear of Liverpool. Uh, Man U have 41 points. I think. Do we agree, John, that this is going to come down? There was a, a sort of grouping at the top of the table. I think Leicester were top at one stage. Villa might have been top or near top at one stage. Everton were there. Um that it's going to come down to Liverpool or City. Do, would you agree with that? Yeah, I would think so, Eamon. Yeah. Uh, now, I've changed my mind on City, Eamon. At the start of the season, 
I said they were gone. I didn't expect them to do yeah, anything. Me too. Uh, but, they, they, but, but they've revived. They have done well. I watched them the other day. Uh, they won more nearly against Sheffield. They weren't very good, actually. But it, it, it's the goal against thing. You, you look at it now, I mean. Yeah. You know, even at their best, they were losing goals and they weren't yeah. defending very well. They're actually defending really well now. Yeah, in and 20 games like, this year, they've conceded 13 goals. Seven at yeah, home, but, six away. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's that's much better than they were last year. Yeah. But, 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 but they're there. It's definitely the two best teams. Are, are definitely Liverpool and Manchester. Uh, uh, sorry, Manchester City. Uh, and Liverpool. Now, you know, the other team, Spurs were in it. You know, Chelsea was supposed to be in it. Leicester was supposed to be in it. I can't see that. Manchester United will be the nearest to them, but they've got to get this consistency that they're not showing at the moment that Manchester City and Liverpool are actually showing. So definitely, yeah, definitely City and, and Liverpool. Just to go briefly to Arsenal, John, who played United there. Arsenal have had a little run uh, mm. and they've gathered some points um, and you can see Arteta is, you know, having a little bit of success, but they still have uh, Xhaka in the team. They still have David Luiz in the yeah. team. And this fella Pepe, who's a, he's a bandit. He costs 70, 70 million, uh, John, and he, he hasn't raised the gallop really, 70 million sterling, uh, and he doesn't really try, to be honest. But at the same time, he has some young players. The young Smith Rowe yes. uh, is a good player. Uh and Saka, who wasn't available for the Manchester United match, he's a good young player. But they don't really... The senior pros in that dressing room aren't great, are they? David Luiz, uh, Pepe, uh, for example, Aubameyang, I'm not sure about, uh, and Lacazette. There'll be a lot of guys there who are happy to be living in, living in London and picking up uh, vast amounts of money every week. They wouldn't be hungry fighters. Well, they don't, they don't look at Eamon. I mean, no. the, the thing is with football, which is great, is that it shows itself on the, on the pitch, Eamon. Yeah. Either do it or you don't do it. It's not like a business and an office and somebody's working in an office and he's not doing this and he's not mm. doing that. No one not doing well. <laughs> Nobody sees that unless the boss sees it. But yeah. you look at football, where there's millions of people watch yeah. football. You're out on the pitch and you, it is what it is. You yeah. can't hide. No. Well, a lot of people hide, but you can be seen. Yeah. Right? And it, that, that's the situation. And uh, I, I totally agree with you. Yeah, with Lewis and Xhaka, they're still there, I mean. I yeah. think he's improved them, but they're still there. Yeah. And they're not going to, their guys are, those guys are not going to change no. into the winners that you have to be yeah. uh, when you're playing in the team with Arsenal. And, yeah. and, and what you'll find, I mean, over a season, or after 20 matches that, usually the team is where they deserve to be. Yes, yes. And that's where we are today, 20... Uh, 20, 21 games played. Now, I want to ask you about Liverpool, John. Yeah. Um, they had a very, very bad time uh, against the weaker clubs in the division. A draw at home with West Brom, a draw away with Fulham, uh, a loss at home to Burnley, a nil-nil yeah. draw away to Newcastle. Uh, they had all those games more or less in a row, which you'd expect them to get maximum points from almost. Nothing uh, very much happened and... Uh, it was worrisome. And uh, now they've gone to Spurs last midweek game. Uh, good, uh, convincing win. And yesterday went to West Ham, who've been doing really well for David Moyes. Uh, I, I, I must say the two goals were brilliant. Uh, Salah's two goals, John. Uh, oh, yeah. were fantastic, weren't they? Ah, yeah. He, uh, well, I was doubting him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Him, down his attitude and that. And since then, he's really, really pe- picked up, you know, against Manchester United, although they were beaten, I think, of them that, that match. But the two, the, the, the two goals he's got, the first, I think it was the first goal, I mean. Yes, was fantastic. Was that the one yeah. he curled into the corner? The no, second, no, sorry, sorry. The second goal the was the, the... second goal. Well, yeah. Thought, well, the first one was brilliant as well, but we've seen him do that before. Yeah. But the second goal, to take the ball uh, uh, first time yes. out of the air yes. and set himself up yeah. was was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And then the finish, of course. You know, but the, 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 the first touch set him up. Yes. It was a really awkward ball coming high in the air over to him, uh, taking it, not even with his right foot, he's taking it with the outside of his left foot. Yes. Absolutely brilliant. And absolutely brilliant. the pass for that goal came from Shakiri. Ball was played out to Shakiri. He didn't take a touch, John. He hit it first no, time. Yeah, yeah. It was a beautiful yeah. pass. Right yeah. into the path. Of Salah. Yeah. I mean, Shakiri has got a lot of ability, John, doesn't he? 
Yeah, he's, he, I think he's a good player. Eh? Yeah, he's a good player. But, 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 but Liverpool have so many good players when they're all fit. Uh, yes. You know, like the, it's very difficult to get, to, to get into the team. And what, what we must mention there, Eamon, I mean, Alexander's pass. Yes, very good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But it was from yeah. a corner kick, actually. It was, they were, yeah. Coming out from a corner kick. But, yeah. But, but uh, Alexander's, I, 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 I have a go. I, well, I criticise him before he's defending. I don't think he's a good defender. But his, but his distribution is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. He sees everything and he can deliver with both feet. But the, the ball out to Shakiri was brilliant. It was nearly from the, the, the edge of the box. Yes. His own box that yeah. put it through. It was a great goal. It was, yeah. it was a defender corner kick, a great pass out, and a brilliant cast by his and, and then and then Salah doing what he's, what he's brilliant at. Yeah. And it was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and uh, I should say, I've been critical of Trent Alexander Arnold as well. Um, and he had uh, a Premier League record 38 times given the ball away in a match a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but at Spurs last week and again yesterday, uh, he seems back. Uh, confidence, huge thing, even though they're champions and they're, you know, yes. marvellous players. Confidence restored, I would say, for Liverpool, John. Uh, and now, of course, yeah. they've got the big match next Sunday. They play City at Anfield, and in the meantime, they play Brighton. I'd just like to briefly talk to you about Brighton, John. I think it's a team we both like, and a coach we both, I think, agree is trying to play football the way it should be played, and yet they're bang there in the relegation zone, fourth from the bottom, and I, I was happy to see them beat Tottenham last night. I didn't watch the match um, because Tottenham sometimes uh, make me go to sleep under the special one. But it, it it's a, it, they got their one nil win, John. They do try to play, don't they? With yeah, this new I think coach, they'll get out of it, Eamon. Yes, and uh, you know, actually, I was amazed at the the, the stat. Uh, it was the first home win. Yep, they've had an, of a, the season. Yeah, you know? they've, and, and they've drawn like the, drawn six at home and lost four. And last night yeah. was their first win. Yep. Yeah, but most of the games I've seen them play, Eamon, they've played well and haven't had the best of breaks. Yep. No, yeah. I know that doesn't go on. That doesn't go on week in, week out. Uh, and uh, they look a good side. He's a good. I think he's a very, very good coach, a manager, whatever we want to call him. Coach, uh, I think these days. Yeah, he's a coach. Yeah. Yeah. He's, 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 he never gets upset. He never, he never. He doesn't bullshit any, no. anything. He, you know, he says no. We didn't play well, or we did play well. And any t- most times I've seen them. They've been unlucky, Eamon. Yes. They played really well. I thought yes. that team have played really well. Yeah. And they deserve more than they got. But anyway, they got the win against Spurs, which, as you say, gives them three valuable points uh, in in that relegation battle. I think they'll get out of it. Yeah, I really I, do. I I I, th- I think, and I hope they will get out of it. Um, and I hope the the board at Brighton don't pull the trigger. The board at uh, well, there is no board at Chelsea. It's Roman Abramovich and the woman that runs the club for him, uh, and she runs it with an iron fist. Um, I think Frank Lampard was very unlucky, John, um, because I don't think he necessarily, and I know you feel strongly, uh, and indeed there were indications that he didn't buy those players in the summer. Uh, He put them in the team uh, and uh, the firing squad arrived and he's gone. I felt his uncle, Harry Redknapp, said, who bought those players in the summer? Uh, in the television interview last week, now Frank might have told his uh, uncle. Yeah, he knows. Yeah, that, yeah, he knows. You know, I didn't buy yeah. those players. Yeah. It is really rough, isn't it? A young, uh, bright, uh, very respected coach gets the job, gets them into the Champions League this year, uh, yeah. in his first season last season. Then goes he, they, he gets players he may not have picked, uh, Germans. Um, well, from Germany, two of them anyway, the more expensive ones, and um, then he's fired out the door uh, before it can uh, work. It takes a while to build a team, John, doesn't it? it of course, it does. What's your view does, on, the, on the Lampard thing? Oh, I, 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 I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's behaved well, Eamon, when for anything he's done. Yeah, I think he was doing a, doing a reasonable job, um, and I would definitely believe that he did not buy those players in the summer. Yeah. Harry, Harry Redknapp is his, is his uncle, I think. Yes, he is, yeah. And Harry can't come out in the paper and say, well, Frank told me this, but he's coming <laughs> out very, very strongly to say, I don't believe he bought those players in the summer. 
Yeah. And it happens a lot in football. Eh? Unfortunately, yeah. it happens a lot in football because Frank would know what Abramovich is like. But when he's offered the Chelsea job, I think this is what yes. happens with lads. He can't insist on the things that you need to do. You yes. can't insist on them. Yeah. Because if he insists on them, he won't get the job. No. And if he goes against it, like in the summer when, when, when I believe Abramovich bought those players, or that lady that you're talking yes. about, those, not Frank, not Frank, right? That, that, at that stage, I mean, you've got to say, I can't put up with this. Yes, and walk. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm responsible for the results and I haven't bought the players and I'll get the blame. Yeah. And- which I do, which he did. But what happens with the likes of Frank? You say, well, I can't say anything. No. Because I'm going, I, 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 if I, if I, the alternative is that I have to leave. Yeah, well, that's it. I just want to take you back before we put put um, st- put an end to this conversation today, um, because I think it's one of the most extraordinary things that you did in your career when you were at West Brom, um, and you did a, an amazing job get getting them up to sixth in the Premiership as it is now and First Division as it was then, from being a team in the Second Division or the Championship as it is now, then. Uh, when you really could have had any job in England um, because you were uh, the Frank Lampard of the day, should we say, having, you know, or better. But you walked. uh, And you walked because you knew that you'd end up with responsibility but no power, not enough power. And that's something you did at the very peak of your, and at the moment in your life, in your 30s, when you never know what's coming, but you did it. Yeah. And it took yeah, an awful lot. How hard was that, John? It took a lot of guts and it surprised yeah, I, everyone, well, I, everyone I, I, I in football. Young, I, I, yeah, I was young, as young and, and re, re, relatively innocent in those days. If, I had, if it was the time all over again, would I do it? I'm not so sure. Right. Right? But that's what I really felt. I still feel very strongly about those situations because a lot of managers, I mean, don't have control of the situation. Well, let me just put it yeah. even clearer. Um, Frank walked, didn't walk uh, at, at Chelsea. You mm. did, um, and the there was one transfer in particular uh, of an England international that uh, got your goat. He was a player at Ipswich, a centre forward. Tell me that story and tell our listeners that story more well, importantly. Man, well, yeah. Well, what I felt when I went into Manny Mane, first of all, I knew nothing about it. I didn't know the conditions of management. I didn't know what the conditions managers had to had to work under or put up with, right? And uh, when we when we were going for promotion, I didn't start off. We were going for promotion, and they they, they, they had no money. They had they had a few bad years, West Brom at that time. They had no money, and uh, used to say, "Well, we need somebody up front. We need a striker." I said, "Yeah." I said, "Well, we'll buy some. No money. There's no point in talking about it, right?" So when we got promotion, we did have a few bob. And uh, uh, there was uh, Paul Mar- Mariner. Paul Mariner was an England international, yeah. or he yeah. certainly became uh, yeah, well, an, good, a, an international. Yeah. He played for Ipswich. I remember him very well. He played for England yeah. as well. Yeah, he was a good lad. Tell us the story. And, anyway. uh, so the, the conditions the, the, the conditions that you, that you don't know about in, 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 in football, and this is a, a, a story of it, right? When we were in the first division, we still they didn't. Say, we got promotion, right? They said we needed a striker, but we got promotion anyway. Is right. So then it got into the we got into the first division, and at a board meeting, he said we need somebody up front. Uh, I said, well, look, there's no point in talking about it. We've no money, and that's it. That's what I said in the second division. Yeah. No point talking about. It. We need somebody up front. We haven't got it, so that's it, right? So this was fairly on in the first division. Uh, um, we, Paul Marlin is available. There's no point in talking about it. Right? We've got no, we've got no money. We need some anyway. So the next day, uh, the man who had a few quid in the board came to see me in little office ad, and he said, uh, "I think we should go for Paul Marlin." And I said, "Well, there's no point in going for Paul Marlin. We've no money." He said, "I think we could raise the money for him." I said, "Now hang on a minute. What you're telling me?" If I fancy the player and you don't, we've no money. But if you fancy the player, we have the money. Now, this is a way of keeping control of the yes. situation, Eamon. Yeah. Nowadays, it's the director of football yes. that's yeah. doing it. 
Yeah. In other words, not the manager, it's the director of football, but it's the, it's the owner's yeah. manager of football, director of football. Yeah. You know um, what I mean? Yeah. And so that was one of the conditions I thought, because what I found in football, and what my take on the football manager still is today, I mean, that getting the players in and getting the players out is 90% of the job. Yeah. 90% of the job is getting the team you want on the field. All managers have a vision of what they want on the field and to fulfill that vision, if that's the right words. They've got to be get your the players. players out that you yeah. don't want and get the players in that you do want. Yeah. Now, if you have a director of football who's getting the players in that they want and getting the players out, you know, that's 90% of the job that you're not allowed to do. Yeah. And that's what I felt at West Brom. I'm yeah. not, I, don't, I haven't got control of this. Yes, so you walked, and I must say. Well, I asked for the conditions, and they said no. I asked for the conditions, and they, and they said no. Yeah, it's a, it's an amazing story, and uh, I'm glad that we can just uh, tell it, uh, and not making a big deal about it. But it's no, very but relevant. The thing is with diamonds, Emma, can I just interrupt, Emma? I think the vast majority of managers in the Premiership or any club have to put up with that. Yep. And a big thing on that, we laughed about it the other day. When a fellow called Graham Smith, is it? Graham Smith at Newcastle. Oh, the the the, the, oh, the new a new, coach. They have a new uh, director of football type or no. a new coach. New coach. I don't yeah. know what his name is. Yeah. Yeah, Graham Smith. I think is his right. Name. He's right. come in now, to oversee. There's no way that, that 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 Bruce brought him in. No. He's been given him. Yes, that's impressive. Right? <laughs> now that's deadly. Yeah. Because one of the, the main things you do uh, as a, a Sorry, Graham Jones. Is his Graham name. Jones. Graham, yeah, Graham Jones. I mean, have a yeah, look at that here. Yeah. Right now, there's no, there's, there's no. If Steve Bruce wanted a coach, I mean, yeah, he'd pick his own coach. Yes, because that's a very, very important part of it, manage, managerial. But Mike manage, Ashley, he, Mike Ashley, the owner of Newcastle, gave him Graham Jones. Yeah, and yes. that's a bad sign for the future prospects of Steve Bruce, who I think we both admire greatly as a person yes. and as a footballer in the past and indeed in the job he's done in various clubs. The bad news that makes it worse for Steve Bruce is that uh, when, no sooner has Jones come in than they win 2-0 away at Everton. Who do you yeah, think, well, who, who do you think they get the credit for that? <laughs> well, that's, that's, that's what they'll say. Do you know what I mean? Yep. But Steve Bruce, the point I'm making there as well, I mean, Steve Bruce has to put up with that. Yeah. You know, there's two things you can do. He said, no, I'm not having that. I'm resigning. Yeah. Or he's to stay on. And it's like when they, they, they buy the players in the summer for Chelsea with Frank Lampard. Yeah. Frank Lampard could tell you at, 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 privately, I didn't buy those players. Yeah. yeah. But I'm responsible for them. Yeah. Okay, that's John. The, that's, the, that's the danger. Okay, the John. With that little parable uh, of real life uh, <laughs> and a time when you were very young and very brave, uh, it's important to say that. Yeah, I'm old now and not brave, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing your best for us, John, and we're very grateful to you. That's John Giles, um, and we're very grateful to John.